a pleasant good morning to everyone and welcome uh, once again to another episode of the Carlos Brown Show, heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and the Spreaker.com. The number to get involved if you care to do so, and I'll give you several options. Area code 936-333-5256. That's area code 936-333-5256. Or you can email me at the Carlos Brown Show at gmail dot com. That's the Carlos Brown Show at gmail dot com. Also, Facebook Messenger is open. A lot of you like to interact with me that capacity. Or you can leave a message comment on the Carlos Brown Show on Facebook. Coming up on today's show, guest menu looks like this: freelance writer. Sports writer Jim Klein Peter joins me again this week talking Southern University baseball, and we're going to get into uh, some of that very, very shortly. Following Jim Klein Peter, uh, we will wrap it up with our uh, basketball talk, HBCU basketball talk with Coach Van Penaway. He'll join me following Jim Klein Peter and I, number two, and then following Coach Van Penaway. The Swag Baseball Report with Charles Edmund of the Alcorn State Radio Network. Quite simply, trending on the Carlos Brown Show this week, Southern University Baseball continues to roll. Listen to this. Defeated LSU in midweek in a midweek game. Following that up the next day, after emotionally coming off a big, big high, Playing UNO, they defeat UNO. And then yesterday, playing a doubleheader, they take care of UAPV in that fashion. So it has been an outstanding week for Southern University baseball. And the win, not only big for Southern University, but I think, in my humble opinion, a big win for the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Whenever you can get outstanding News, that's good. That's always a good thing. In the past couple of shows, we've talked about um, baseball in the Southwest Athletic Conference, a sport that, you know, with the right nurturing, the right growth, the right planning, that baseball could be that sport that can make some noise consistently. So we'll talk about Swag baseball, Southern baseball, and just kudos to Eli Finney. He had a no-hitter against LSU. He's a left-hander. And the, the sad thing was I wasn't able to attend, but guess what? I was able to listen to the audio of the game. Two and two after that victory. Uh, he just pissed the gym. And kudos goes out to uh, Southern University Coach Jackson, the staff, and the players, and the fan base. They really came out. And then to follow that up with a uh, another big victory against UNO. Hey, what a great midweek. Um, Southern's RPI, you, you can go through several of uh, the, the listings. I use Division One Baseball, RPI 1. Uh, 87. So, not bad. Got a chance to look at some of the other schools in the conference. Not as, of course, not as high as 187. And one, and look, this Southern baseball program, I think the best days are still ahead. You still want to grow smartly. Um, they have already just doing a, some, some research and looking. They have some nice commitments some nice signings, and the future is bright. And that's why I came up with this poll question. What should Carrick Jackson's new contract look like? Because we all know this is the last year of the contract. We often talk about it. Hey, should be having a new contract done ASAP. Reach out to his agent, Coach Banks, and by the way, Coach 
Roman Banks has committed to joining me next week on the Carlos Brown show. So I'm sure that question <laughs> will come up to him as much as he can uh, talk about it, but we can talk about it. We can speculate how that next contract should look. You know, I'm just sitting around thinking about that. And I came up with some numbers, but maybe I, now that I think about it, that one number I use overall salary, maybe a bit, well, it might not be good enough. We shall see. But let me get another perspective. Michael Prince, he's Dr. Brother Michael Prince. He can have a different perspective on this week in Southwest Athletic Conference baseball, specifically Southern University. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, my brother. How are you this morning? I'm doing fine. I'm safe and sound, but I, I will say this. Those in the Gulf South, Gulf States area, be careful today. Um, projecting some very uh, wicked weather, a potential outbreak. So govern yourselves accordingly. Yes, sir. No doubt about it. Uh, it's actually scheduled to hit here. Uh, they missed from this morning, but it is en route. In fact, um, there was a parade scheduled for 10 o'clock this morning in the city limits of Prairie View recognizing uh, men's basketball and celebrating the 50th year of Prairie View's existence as an incorporated city. And they're continuing on with that parade, thankfully, to try to beat the storm. But it's going to be pretty ugly pretty soon. Yeah, it's, you know, hey, the crate is still in charge. No doubt about in it. In of everything that's going on. So I just wanted to remind everybody to just kind of uh, be safe. Govern yourselves accordingly. On that note, Southern Baseball. Yes, big sir. win. Huge win. Huge win. Yeah, big win. You know, I try to calm myself down. It's very nice, very good. But I look at the big picture. But just kind of get your thoughts on the week that was well, Southern and Swag Baseball. The week that was was a phenomenal week. And I don't care. You know, we give each other a hard time uh, with our respected uh, alma maters, and deservedly so. We're we're proud of our institutions that we're part of and also proud mm-hmm. of this conference. And when you see one of your brethren go out there and stick it to the quote-unquote man, um, it, it makes you feel mighty, mighty proud. And then to follow that up the next day, with uh, another solid home performance to let you know it's not a fluke, you know, it's a huge thing. And it's just echoing. And we need to be very, very conscious. And, Brother Carlos, you've heard me from time to time. I've been echoing that if we can make an impact, it's going to be through baseball. Right now, the Power Fives are trying to collectively come together to vote on uh, adding a third paid assistant Mm-hmm. and pushing their scholarships up to 22 because there's so much parity. They want to hoard all the talent they can. And unfortunately, I'm just going to just put it out there, for most of our HBCU programs, they would rather invest their monies, and in some cases deservedly so, on the football programs and the basketball programs, but you, your money can stretch the furthest with a solid consistent baseball program and Mm -hmm. this is evident of what you're seeing right now and um i'm i'm uh swag proud of what uh brother jackson has been able to accomplish for your beloved uh columbia blue and gold fantastic week (laughs) fantastic week well appreciate that and i'm sure southern fans and alum uh, appreciate those Kind, well, you, you know, I just kind, uh, but also true word. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I got a brother. Uh, he listens to your show faithfully, and he listens to my show, and I thank him very much. He listens to the network because uh, we're all inclusive network here at the Open yes, Mic. Uh, Desmond Allen, I believe that's his name. I call him Brother D. Oh yeah. Uh, he sends me an inbox, and he says, "You know, Mike. You know, Southern is the best 
thing you've ever laid eyes on earth. <laughs> you know, I didn't even respond. I said, I'm a brother, brother Allen, I'm going to let you have that because I'm feeling good enough for you too. That was the one that even old Cato, I had to say, I'd be John Brown, you know, yeah. that, that this guy is serious about um, bringing this program swag back. And we're not going to be trashing on brother Cato, but we know brother Cato left that baseball program in a wreck. He left it, it. He left it in a wreck. Yeah, it it, it was not in, in in good shape, and, and that and, and everybody knows that. Now it doesn't diminish um, what he was able to do at Southern University, and not the wreck. At all. And, and history will will be kind to Coach Cato in that regard. But yeah, at <laughs> toward the end, it, it is what it is, and now with coach Jackson now and, and, and I'm, I'm going to go back again I, I was definitely puzzled but talking with you I I, I thought that contract that, that that coach Jackson signed it was more of his doing than it was not so I'm going to tie all of this in with, with, with the poll question what should coach Jackson's new contract look like and if you don't mind I'd like for you to add some comments for, for you out there or if you want to text me or what have you and just kind of kind of put together a little portfolio to see what people are thinking in, in, in what direction. Now, I, I'll, I'll give you mine. I'll tease it a little bit. I'll give you what I think. But, hey, I can be flexible because I'm not the AD. You get it? <laughs> uh, I, I can be flexible. But from the university, 7-2, upset over number eight LSU and then coming back against UNO uh, five to four, two midweek games. That was the first win for Southern University at Lee Hines uh, Field. Now, it's not the first time that LSU's come there and played, but then it also was the first victory since 2005, and that one was at, um, at the old Alex uh, Box Stadium. And I say, oh, but it, it, it was historic in itself. So, Southern University baseball is going to be very interesting. When I speak with Jim Klein, Peter, coming up very shortly, and I'm, I'm going to ask you right now, Michael Prince. Yes, that's me. Southern <laughs> University, pick fifth. And don't you just love the, the preseason prediction? Of course. You know, you got to have something to talk about before the games yeah. are played. So we, can we safely say now that Southern baseball will not be fifth in the Western Division? <laughs> that's not just opinion. I think that's fact. Well, on, on a scale of one to ten, with ten being the probabilities that they would finish above fifth, um, I would have to put that at a a, a nine and a half. Okay. Uh, a nine yeah, and a half. I, I was thinking nine three four, but <laughs> just, hey, we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna fight over the. We're not, we'll the, behave the on numbers. this. We'll behave on this segment right here about that now. But yeah. uh, in in all fairness, um, I I told you you know preseason man when I spoke with this guy and we just talked baseball. And, and and part of the method of the madness of why he entered into this contract the way he did, it didn't seem fair to begin with. But when you believe in yourself and willing to gamble on yourself, if given the proper opportunity, um, this case self is winning. And so uh, to answer your poll question, I think I think you, you need to at least recommit for three years. OK, and with that three years, it will give you a full cycle of dealing with his recruits and what he could uh, develop from his recruits of uh, some speaking to his philosophy. He believes in building freshmen, redshirting freshmen, uh, sparingly, mm -hmm. sparingly using some JUCO transfers. But you got to give him three years, because if you count the three years with the two years of what he's already proven, that'll give you five years in the hopper. And you got to kind of compensate him enough where he can keep some quality assistance because that is the stronghold 
for our uh, divisional baseball um, competitiveness is the head coaches, they're fighting for their salary and a quality assistant salary. And you can't do all this on your own. And if they could, you know, pony up, I don't know exactly what his numbers are. Maybe I have to go and research that. But if they could pony up and give this man enough where he can keep his staff together, it could be some wonderful days um, at at old Columbia Blue and Gold. Well, getting a little bit of feedback, interesting that you said the number three. Um, M says, let's pull it up right quick. Carlos, I think he should get a three-year deal. You just said three. Yes, sir. I'll just release part of my thoughts. I said three years, and I'm almost willing to say an option year for year four. But do you leave that to the university or to Coach Jackson? But it seems like so far, three-year deal seems to be getting um, getting some – the praise here. Well, I think, three I think the three year is a very uh, competitive and fair offer. And the reason I say that he's already proven himself with this two mm-hmm. year stint, even, and you know, I don't think this would happen if you were to collapse and say, lose, um, you're playing Pine Bluff this weekend. Your next series would be against Texas Southern. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the, the only home series in the second half of the conference schedule. Right. Okay. Now, uh, but just say you, you went uh, 10 and two in the first half. Say you go six and six in the second half, even if you collapse and do that, this man is still resurrected the program and he's worthy of that three year option. That's just from outside looking in from Mm -hmm. outside looking in. And um, I think he is well worth that. Well worth that. But I, the concern is, yeah, you want to pay the coach, but you want to be able to pay the coach where he can maintain his pitch pitching staff. You know, and mm-hmm. if you ask any of these coaches, especially the ones, I don't know if you guys are fully funded as far as the 11.7 scholarships go, but if you can put me on a competitive playing field where I got my 11.7 scholarships and I got my assistants to help me get through it, and I'm not talking about – Grad assistance, and, and let me say, and there's no knock on grad assistance, but grad assistants are still somewhat green. They're trying to figure their way out with the classes that they're taking and the the necessary toolage and knowledge that they have to help aid a winning program is not quite on the level of what I'm talking about. That's what these Power 5 schools are lobbying for right now. And unbeknownst to us, thank God for the Big 12 and the Big 10, for whatever reason, they're holding back on this thing. but And, and you got to be very careful, brother. The moment they do this, it's going to be even darker days for our HBCU brethren when it comes to baseball and softball, for that matter, because of what that will do as far as changing the pendulum of athletic scholarships and talent available throughout this nation. I have to keep a close, close look at that. Because the landscape will change drastically, and, drastically, and, and it, it seems like whenever there's a, a, a bit of progress made, take two steps forward, then you get dragged back three, five steps. There you go, backwards. But hold that thought. We'll, we'll come back to that. Um, okay, M says salary per year ninety five thousand. Well. Uh, I, I don't know what Coach Jackson is making now, but is he saying uh, is he uh, saying that's the current salary, or he's saying that's what it a uh, projected salary? Well, I, I'm thinking he's he's, he's thinking ninety five thousand per year in the new one. Remember, I said what what the new contract? What should it look like? Well, if we don't know what the contract that he signed originally, the pay on that, but. I, I would be willing to go up to, and again, I know you're going to get into this, this budgetary situation. What can you afford? You need to keep uh, a, a recruiting budget, um, a, a pitching coach. You know, 
I'm saying 110. Again, this is based on not knowing what his contract is now. And I'm sure, okay, here we go. I knew somebody was going to going to let me know. Boy, you can never, never ask about getting help if you need it. So I guess I need help. Um, BW says Jackson is making 75000 Well, 110000 <laughs> I just said push him up to 110000 How about 100000 um let's let's go back just for a second. The average salary for a proven SWAC champion is about one hundred twenty five thousand dollars. Head baseball coach. If, no, wait, 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 wait a minute. He, he said, wait again. a minute. Yes, sir. About one hundred twenty five thousand dollars. Yes. sir. OK, well, who technically you think makes that in the conference now? Technically, in the conference now, Mike Robertson. I know one. Mike Robertson. Um, yeah, struggling uh, this year, but yes, yeah, no, but but um, he's in that he's in that he's in that one ten to one twenty range, I would say. Um, mm-hmm. Arizona State and potentially Jackson State. Hmm. I'm just trying to see where my offer with one ten. One ten would be enough to make them say yes, in my opinion. One ten, and um, not knowing what his assistants are at, but if the assistants can get a fifteen to twenty thousand bump on their salary, I think because they're important as well. They are vital, brother. They are absolutely yeah. vital. You, the part of the problem is um, I've been watching some collegiate games, some high school games this season, and it is it is amazing that. These kids are not taught properly how to throw a baseball from a pitcher's perspective. The largest muscle on the body are the legs, and these guys are not using their legs to throw a baseball. And it is amazing to me, and you wonder why you have all these arm injuries and these Tommy John surgeries, because these guys are not they're throwing the ball. They're not pitching the ball. They're absolutely throwing. And they think it's all in their arm when it's really – Seventy percent of pitching is from your legs. Boy, I tell you, I, I, I'm getting good feedback. I love it. I, I'm listening to you, Brother Prince, baseball guru. I got people sending me information. Thank you, VW. Um, I, I did see some of this. Um, wow. I guess I'll stop right here, but you can always add these comments in. Don't you just appreciate everybody just of listening course. in and, and giving feedback? I'm that's why you're the, the way, man. Thanks, that's why you're you. the man, Carlos. Well, well, if I if I don't know something, I'm not ashamed to say that. But I'm also going to rely on information to get it out to you. Um, Kano was making, let's see, one twenty five plus twenty five thousand from the foundation. So. Like I said, one twenty five. One fifty. Uh-huh. I I'm gonna have to uh, my offer that I had that I said based on this new information that I'm getting, I'm gonna take that off the table. Uh oh. And and I'm gonna have to uh uh oh think about it. A change about of going form. up. And, and this going is the up. fun part. You're not you going up. This. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm going up. Wait a minute. Oh, I thought don't, you said you're not don't. going up. Oh no, no, you gotta go up. Man, I thought we was about to have our first our first slinging today. Oh, I'm sure it's coming, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's coming. But with that being said, sometimes you pay for potential. You pay for what's going on now. Uh, and, and thank you, VW Southern does have a full time pitching coach, but you still got you can't forget about the assistance, recruiting budget. Um and Southern doesn't have the full allotment of scholarships because of APR sanctions. That's coming. the f- The future looks bright. Do you Do and you know how, how many scholarships much, you have? Um, let's see. Next year, Southern will have all of its scholarships. Don't have the exact number. Now, I, I remember right after Ricky Weeks, you know, left the program. There was a cut in scholarships. But with that being said, this whole thing, this whole situation 
they're going to have to put a lot of planning in it. Well, I'm talking about Coach Banks and his staff, and you, in my humble opinion, you've got to be able to keep Coach Jackson happy. You got to so keep the, Coach Jackson. The three happy. year, the three year, the three year extension the, of the New Deal. I think everybody's happy with that. Comments are still pouring in. I, I, I promise you, I'll, I'll try to get you all of them. Yes, sir. Um, what I was going to say, Brother Carlos, it, it not only keep Coach Jackson happy, but we have to really consider and go back to the drawing board on how we invest in baseball as a conference. Mm-hmm. The, the, this, man, this could just be the tip of the iceberg. The well, tip of the iceberg. I would agree with that. And I, I, I stated earlier, Coach Banks has committed to coming on Next Saturday, which will be April the 20th. Also, another commitment. The commissioner of the Southwest Athletic Conference. So I'm going to have them both on the show next week. And that's something that I could bring up to Coach Banks and Dr. McClellan. Please Their do. thoughts on, Please on, do. on baseball and, 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 and putting things in place where this Sport can really reach its highest goals. I, I would love that. I love that. I and you. I will appreciate your input as well on on the uh, on the, on the interviews. Is that a personal invite? Oh, I guess so. Wow, man! You so that go- that I, I think it's going to be. Uh, we may have to make some adjustments on next week. <laughs> I mean, you, 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 you could go literally an hour with Banks, an hour with Dr. McClellan. But I'm minded of the time that they have, and I appreciate the time that they commit to. So we'll try to get the, the most bang for our buck, our time. That 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 sounds intriguing and, and very encouraging, man. You're all right, Carlos. You're all yeah, right. Well, I'll try to be. But speaking of that, let's highlight quickly and then a timeout. Then time for our first guest who is ready. That'll be Jim Klein Peter, freelance writer. He covers Southern University uh, football, baseball. Let's just say Southern University athletics. Southern baseball continues to roll. Defeated LSU 7 2. First time defeating LSU at Lee Hines Field. And then after that, emotional high. And it was emotional. But. You know, they weren't dogpiling and all that. Uh, by the way, uh, I, 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 I was almost put on injury reserve here. Uh, <laughs> dogpiling on my sofa <laughs> at the Casa <laughs> by myself. Why would I do that? Amen. The emotion of it. Amen. Um, it, was beautiful, it was a beautiful thing, brother. Absolutely. And a little twitch in the, uh, the lower, lower back muscles there. <laughs> In the Chris uh, Maximus area? Um, yeah, and here, and lower back. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it was worth it, huh? <laughs> hey, take you some ibuprofen and call it call it the day. Yeah. <laughs> or do like, man, just stretch and no pain medication. How about that? Okay, but it was worth that. it. Eli Finney, seven innings, no hitter through six, helps Southern University defeat. LSU 72 and then backed it up against UNO after an emotional, emotional game, being able to come back and beat a silent Southland team. UAPV 10 to 4 yesterday in game one, and then, oh boy, brought out the, the power 21 to 2 over UAPV. You know, Coach James, I consider a friend, but it's time that maybe we need to have a talk. Uh oh. It's been a tough, it's been a tough. Tough year. I understand that. The, now they're at home finally, and um, maybe they'll get better. Well, to his defense, but, uh, to his defense, he, he's playing with four scholarships on the possible 11.7. Uh, mm-hmm. It's been rough. And uh, I don't know if you were aware of this. He was actually inducted into his uh, old uh, college uh, sports hall of fame this past week. Um, I did. I did see that on Twitter. Yeah. And so, I mean, uh, it's been a rough hill now, and it hadn't been just this year. You know, it's been a rough few years. Um, 
uh, you, you, you scratch your head and you go like, uh, I, I know what you've done. Well, well I, I'm saying talk to him, but now I'm not going to say he deserves to be shown the door. Okay, okay. That. okay. But, you know, sometimes you need to, oh, wait a minute, you're saying it like, oh, okay. Uh, no, 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 I wasn't saying it like that. I think we're in agreement. It's not time to show show him the door. However, you got a new AD there, and um, right. uh, uh, hopefully he's going to understand. Yes, yes. <laughs> you, you would hope. You would hope. But now, yeah. once again, I'm going to kind of piggyback off of uh, what got our beloved uh, coach fired up last week, Coach Petaway. If you want a man or woman to compete, put them on an even playing field. Give them the resources. Give them the resources. You mm-hmm. can't expect me to go and create magic if I don't have all my magic tricks. You got to create, you got to mm-hmm. support, if it's the bare necessities, you know. So on, on a good day, on a good day, if I got four scholarships, even if I just 50% my guys, they give me eight players. So if I go 25% of that, that gives me 16 potential guys that I can add to this team with your walk-ons. I've been doing a breakdown of collegiate baseball scholarships and availabilities. The average D1 program has 11.7 scholarships, which is 27 guys that are on scholarship, which leaves room for eight walk-ons. So they have a 35-man roster. That's not a lot to be playing with and expecting good results from. Wow. Good. Yeah. Great information. And speaking of that, my – my all corn fans, friends slash, still like to beat you in A.W. Mumford Stadium has weighed in on our topic. Thanks, MJ. If I was an AD, I would give him 125000 That guy can coach. I wish he was at all corn. Well, they'll be satisfied with just winning football there, I, MJ. I, I, <laughs> hey, you leave MJ alone, man. <laughs> no, I, I, I love him to death, and uh, I appreciate uh MJ, his input, and MJ, tell your father. I said hello. His father really uh, likes to, <laughs> to show me tell you a story about about that one. But uh, speaking of that, uh, Alcorn State, Jackson State, because of the climate weather, or pending weather, um, their spring game, football game, canceled. Grambling State moved theirs to yesterday, and their, their beat writer, Corey, Diaz, he'll join me as well next week to to kind of wrap up Grambling State's spring. Well, you gonna have you gonna have action. a monster week next week, man. Oh yeah, I'm trying to get back in the swing of things. Sometimes I'm gonna have four or five guests to show, but we'll fit them all in. And let me do this. Let's take a time out when we come back. A freelance sports writer Jim Klein Peter. I'll have a discussion with him about this wonderful, magical, let's not say magical, wonderful, good week for Southern University in baseball. What to expect in the conference, the second half is for Southern University. We'll talk about that next with Jim uh, Klein-Peter. You're listening to this week's edition of the Carlos Brown Show, heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network at Spreaker.com. I'll be right back. Be the one with courage to fight child abuse. All Texans must find the courage to fight child abuse. Learn the signs and symptoms and report suspected abuse to appropriate authorities. Learn and know these warning signs. A child who undergoes changes in behavior, appetite, or routine. Watch for unexplained injuries, a change in academic performance, or loss of interest by a child in regular activities. Trust your instincts. If you suspect something, do something. If you believe a child is in an abusive situation, please call the Texas Abuse Hotline at 1-800-252-5400. Be the one with courage. To find your local children's advocacy center, visit onewithcourage.org. On behalf of children, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Drivers and bicyclists both have the right to be on the road and travel safely. And when we're on the road together, safety is a shared responsibility. 
State law requires drivers to maintain at least three feet of clearance when passing bicyclists. And bicyclists should always ride with the direction of traffic and follow all traffic signals. It's safer. It's courteous. It's the law. A message from the Regional Planning Commission Pedestrian and Bicycle Program. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Carlos Brown Show, heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast and Spreaker.com. Today's first guest, freelance sports writer Jim Klein Peter, covers Southern University Athletics. Good morning to you, Jim. Good morning, Carlos. Doing okay? I'm doing great. Having a good day so far. Well, that's good. And speaking of a good day, good days for. Southern University baseball, uh, a wonderful week for the Jaguars in baseball. I, wouldn't you agree? Uh, I, you know, you, you'd have to uh, go back a ways to find a better one. Uh, just uh, if they can finish the sweep on Sunday, then uh, wow, what a, what a week they'll be talking about it. I understand. Jim, you cover Southern University baseball, and – the game with LSU, I thought Southern would represent themselves well. I thought they would play hard. And at the end of the day, my opinion was I thought Southern University would fall just a, a, a bit short. You covering the team, I guess you don't have a per se an emotional attachment, but what are your thoughts were coming into the ball game for Southern University baseball? Well, um, you know, I think they showed a lot. They showed how much they improved. They lost to LSU 17-4 to early in the season, and I saw that game. Uh, I saw them lose 13 to nothing to Air Force. And to me, going into that game, I was looking to see how much they had improved. And, you know, it was startling uh, how much improvement you saw. Uh, how much, and I think the biggest area of improvement was confidence because um, – you know, they played a, a, almost a mistake-free game. They got great pitching. Uh, they made one error. I mean, LSU with one hit going into the seventh, uh, you know, getting one hit uh, through seven innings, one run, um, and then they finished. You know, they could have, you know, three innings is plenty of time for LSU to come back and win that game, but Southern finished that game. LSU scored in the top of the seventh, but Southern came back with two runs in the bottom. They answered and and to me, that said, this game's over. Yeah, and Finney, Eli Finney, wow. Pitch just a gem of a game, and uh, kudos to, to him. Uh, you know him. Is he the type of guy that you thought could come out and accomplish what he did? Well, no, I, I have to say I didn't expect that because he's not a uh, he's not been a weekend starter. You, you know, you try to get your your three best starters on the weekend, but um, with him uh, uh, pitching like that, he might pitch his way into a weekend starting job. Uh, I think Jacob Snyder's hurt right now, uh, and so they had to go with uh, John Gens, uh on Sunday this week, but. Uh, Keep an eye out for, for, for Eli Finney. Now, he threw seven innings, so I don't know that he might be able to pitch. I guess it's possible he could pitch Sunday if they need him in relief. But uh, I would look for him uh, to make a bid for, a, for one of the weekend posts uh, if he has another. And Southern's got a, a couple of more midweek games this year. So um, you know, let's keep an eye on him for sure. And I was reading uh, uh, some of the articles, of course, of course that you posted, and you talked about pitching and can it get better? How and in what way can Southern's pitching get better? Because if we look at it, maybe that's the point of the program or the area of the program that, that needs to be more consistent and, and get better. Yeah, well, the first thing I'm going to say about pitching is uh, college pitching is, is watered down just because um, – all the really good arms uh, end up signing uh, out of high school, you know, the really, really good arms. So it's hard to get really good pitching. 
uh, college. There's a lot of guys that are capable and, and, and good, solid college pitchers. But to me, the key is being able to throw strikes. And um, Southern's pitching staff was walking too many guys early in the season. What you got to do is get them, you know, working the hitters and, 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 and throwing the ball over the plate, but not, you know, you can't throw it over the plate every pitch. You've just got to get ahead of the batters. And I think that's one thing that Eli Finney did. He got ahead of hitters, and then you can, you can work from behind and make them hit your pitch. But that's where the improvement has been. Um, throw the ball over the plate and, and let the defense work. And Southern's got a pretty decent defense. Uh, their outfielders can all run. They can run balls down. I know um, J.B. and Williams has saved uh, quite a few runs this year with his defense. And I saw, um, geez, I'm trying to remember if it was Ashanti Wheatley or if it was uh, Hampton Hudson who uh, – ran down a ball against uh, UNO, just um, all out speed, caught it right near the line uh, the other night. So, um, yeah, the pitchers need to, let, need to get the ball put in play. You're not going to strike out a lot of guys because they don't have a lot of hard throwers. But uh, just have enough confidence to throw strikes and, and, and you know, fill up the strike zone. Visiting with Jim Klein Peter, freelance sports writer covering Southern University athletics. I, I know if we look back again to last year, they lost a lot of games late. Uh, bullpen uh, needs to get significantly better. Does Coach Jackson feel that the bullpen has gotten better they, or have they been more consistent in, in getting better? Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, and you saw it against UNO. You know, Southern was really in control of that UNO game. Then they made a couple of errors. They kind of lost their focus. But then they regained it thanks to the bullpen. They had three guys come in and throw a scoreless inning. And, you know, that's, that's, that's pressure pitching. And, that, and that, they look good doing that. But Coach Jackson, his specialty is pitching. He was a pitcher in college. And he was a pitching he was he handled pitching as a as an assistant coach. So um I, I would expect, you know, you could see this every year. Southern will I, I'm guessing they will always hit the ball well. Um, but their pitching, what you want is that you want to see it improve uh for tournament time, especially the SWAC tournament, because it doesn't matter what Southern does in the regular season, they've got to go win the SWAC tournament if they want to make if they want to make the NCAA tournament. And you win the you win the, these uh, uh, conference tournaments. You win those with pitching. You got to have guys that can come in and and pitch, uh, and uh, you know in tight situations. And uh, when when you maybe a starter gets knocked out early, you got to have a guy come in that can hold the fort and and prevent runs until you catch up. So um, I like Southern chances, and I uh, because. A lot of it is because Coach Jackson is uh, very in tune with pitching, and, and, he, and he's got them improving and, you know, hitting their peak at the right time. Visiting with uh, Jim Klein, Peter, freelance uh, sports writer, covers Southern University Athletics. After your last comment, that, that leads me right into uh, the next part of this interview, and, and it's a swag baseball, second half to start at Southern University second half got off to a good start 10 to 4 over UAPB in game one and then wow 21 to 2 in in the uh second game now i think southern goes from being the hunter to the haunted and only one series at home in the second half kind of get your thoughts on being the hunted now and how well do you think they can uh perform in the second half of the Swag baseball season. Well, I think yesterday's result is a good example of what I was talking about. You, those two teams, um, when they played earlier in the year at Southern, Pine Bluff really battled Southern. Now, Southern blew them out in one game, but Pine Bluff really battled them. And now you're looking at two teams, one that has soaring confidence, and that's Southern, and the other one, which is, you know, two and whatever, two and 14 now or two and 12 in, in conference play. And, uh, I, you know, I, I expect Southern to get the sweep. I, I just think, you know, they're, they're asserting themselves. 
and uh, I see them being strong in the second half. Grambling is, you know, we'll see what happens next week or week after next to Grambling, um, because Grambling uh, was a uh, they Southern. I think that was the series where they had two one to nothing games. Maybe not. Maybe it was Texas Southern. But um, uh, so it, it'll be interesting to see how Southern does at Grambling. Grambling seems to be the second best team in the uh, in the SWAC West. Yeah. Southern had to, uh, the game that I went to, 15 to 13. Then they had to battle back in, in two of those three games, to, to your point. And now switching to Grandma State, which has been a tough place and a rival, uh, regain. It'll be the one that I think you can have, you, you have to pencil in in the uh, second half. And then also, uh, what, next weekend at home, Texas Southern, and they really. Uh, Southern 1-0, then they lost 1-0, and uh, they, they took two out of three. So um, I guess if if you're Coach Jackson, and you know him much better than I do, he's probably going to not take any of those teams lightly and have the Southern prepared to come out and face those teams like they, they are number one in the conference. Oh, yeah, I, I think that series next weekend is going to be big. Um, like you said, it sounds to me like Texas Southern's got can can hang with Southern in pitching. You know, you're talking about two games that could have gone either way. Uh, you know, one to nothing games. You just don't see those too often in college baseball. Yeah. So um, that that's going to be big. That'll be huge for Southern. Uh, and uh, uh, they can get. Uh, you know, they probably if they can keep winning, if they can win the next two series, this they've already got this one won. Um, They'll be in position to rest some people in the final SWAC series and uh, prepare, you know, get some other people ready for the conference tournament, which is going to be in New Orleans. Yeah, and, and Jim, here's one of the things that I've discussed over the years. And But Southern, if they go on to continue to play the way they've played and, and, and do very well in the regular season, all of it for not if they don't win the SWAC baseball tournament. And, and I know it's a great experience, but here's one of the years that if they continue to play as well as they've been playing, they are the best team in the conference. They should be able to, you know, you would think, hey, one big league, let them go. But I, I know it's a tournament, and I know I'm in a minority on, on that thinking. But this would be one of the years, and some other years with Texas Southern and what have you, that they were truly the best team in the conference and shouldn't matter about a tournament. They should be go go based on what they did in the, in the regular season. Well, you know, I'll tell you, and I, uh, I'm like you. I'd like to see, you know, them maybe open the tournament up, but – Southern, you know, you got to win those midweek games. That if you, if Southern could could have done, you know, won a few. Say if they had gone four and four in those first eight midweek games, you know, you maybe you could make an argument for them to get, you know, one of the at large bids. You know, but you gotta, you know, you gotta prove it. And so your zero and eight midweek games, you know, until those now these last two, you know, were pretty big ones, but. Um, so, but you know what's going to happen is even if they win the SWAC, they're going to end up over at LSU, probably as a as a four seed in in the uh, in the regionals, and that, and that's a shame. They need to try. I wish, you know, it's just it's really not fair to have to if they go to the same place. You switch it up because they could probably send them to ULL, and you know at least that would be something a little bit different. Yeah, and in in a, in a few years, or oh, some years ago, you know that. That was a discussion with Coach Kadar. You know, it will be a reward for uh, the tournament champion to, to kind of go go experience a, a, another, you know, regional tournament. But you know, from a I guess a geographical standpoint, now and in a financial standpoint, they usually try to keep you as close as possible. But to your point, yeah, that that would be nice. Even if let's say if Ole Miss gets a regional. And Southern wins out. What have you going to play there or in Texas? Yeah, there's a lot, and, and see because there's a couple of um, 
you know, there's always a couple of SEC, I mean, a couple of Louisiana uh, small schools in the, um, in the tournament that could, you know, swap places with Southern, you know, uh, mm-hmm. so, where Southern could go to ULL or Southern could go to, um, uh, you know, somewhere else. So, yeah, well, I mean, but to your point, because Jackson State uh, played at the ULL tournament a few years ago and, and, and did well, you know, in the first, in the first game. So it, it'll be interesting to see what happens. But, hey, Southern has to continue to win, and they'll have to win the swag baseball tournament to, to make it to the NCAA regional. That is a fact. Yes, sir. We'll see. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting a, a strong finish. I think Southern's just playing with so much confidence right now that uh, it's going to be hard for anybody in the SWAC to overtake them. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Alabama State looks like they have some pitching. So, Yeah, man. They've done well over the last few years. And, and then don't count out Texas Southern. That's the point you made. Pitching. And, they're, you know, hey, they're still tough until – Somebody takes them out. So that swag baseball tournament uh, is going to be interesting, but still some series left, some games left to be played, and uh, we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, uh, Jim, finally, I, I know maybe you're going to have some thoughts on this, but, of course, Coach Jackson, a lot of talk on this show and on social media. Southern has to take care of Coach Jackson, and hopefully you'll be – Hopefully you'll have something to write about uh, eventually about good news. Coach Jackson is still at Southern University as the head of the baseball program with uh, a, a new contract. Yeah, I, I think uh, you know we'll have to let the season play out because you don't want to you don't want to rush into this. It's uh, you know we're just we're halfway through the SWAC season and you know nothing you know nothing's final, but it seems like. You know they want they might want to start thinking about uh, doing something for him. I mean they took care of Dawson Odom, and rightfully so because uh, Dawson proved himself. Uh, he, you know he brought the program back. He fought through a lot of adversity. Um, Coach Jackson has done a lot, but let's see. You know let's see what happens in the SWAC tournament, and let's see uh, you know where they go from here. Well, good point. But uh, if it was based on so far, and it's not based on so far. Boy, he'd have a nice six inch. <laughs> yes, sir. I think I, you know, I can see it. You know, I can see it coming. But uh, you know, like I said, you got to let things play out, and uh, that's why they don't. You, know, you don't give it to them in, in the middle of the season. You got to wait and see what the season turns into. So, yeah. Well, that that that's a good point. That's a good point. Point taken. Uh, Jim, appreciate it. As always, we'll talk again uh, real soon. Have a great rest of your weekend. My pleasure, Carl. Thanks for having me on. All righty. Jim Klein Peter, freelance sports writer, covers Southern University uh, athletics. Um, talking about Southern University baseball, maybe we should just kind of hold, roll back just a little bit. But guess what? The emotion of it all has gotten to us. Let, let me read this, and, 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 and it's kind of maybe it'll put – some of this in perspective. CT says, Coach Jackson is deserving of three more years. However, you are not acting smart if you increase his salary beyond twenty-five to thirty thousand of his current salary, and increase and increase his full-time assistance. Never do you go up to one twenty-five or more for a coach who hasn't won a championship or win just one. Not sound financially appreciate the comment interesting so i I, i'm ready to give him a contract before the season's over some people's like wait wait wait, just just let the rest of the season uh, play out let's say hypothetically that coach jackson southern's baseball team wins the regular season but boy, well, the Western Division. And then let's say they get to the Swag Baseball Tournament and Alabama State knocks them out. Does it change your mind? For as Coach Jackson, depending on 
and remembering where did this baseball program come from in year two. We talked a little bit about where the baseball program was before Coach Jackson signed on. Talking to most people, I believe they thought this baseball program would get better, but not so soon in year two. It kind of reminds me of a situation, and let me see if I can tie this together, and if you disagree, that's fine. I want to hear from you. But I remember in the Louisiana Superdome at a football game, a new coach playing against a Northwestern State football team that quite honestly, and I'm going to be brutally honest, I said to myself, and I told my best friend, he knows this. If Southern is close in the fourth quarter, they may have a chance. And Southern went out and blew this team out, Northwestern State, the Southland. Could have named the score, the speed, the discipline of that football team on that day. First time seeing a Southern football team under Coach Richardson. And right then, right then after that game, in my humble opinion, the bar was set right then. And that was the expectation that you expected. And the rest is history. Now, some people will say you're hired to get fired, whether you're in sports talk radio or regular talk radio. People have, even the great ones, they've had a check slid over to the table to him and been told your program is no more. That's the way life goes. And so with Coach Jackson, I think what will happen is he'll get taken care of. No more of these special little playful emails. A text message saying, Southern better take care of him because somebody else will. (laughs) Oh, I know that. But at the end of the day, when your time has come and gone, did you leave the program in better shape than you found it? Did you contribute anything to the program? most cases, if you can look back and say you did, you're going to have some tough times, but if you have more good times, that's the way it goes. That's life. So we'll see what happens with, with Coach Jackson. Coach Banks has graciously agreed to come on next week, and I'll put the scenario to him. What he can say and how much can he say It'll be up to Coach Banks. Remember when I had him on the last time with Coach about Coach Odom's in that situation? <laughs> it, it, it's interesting because, I mean, you have to ask the, the questions that you think people want asked. And you have to be professional about it. We'll talk about that, state of the athletic program or what have you. Then, of course, next week, the commissioner has agreed to come on of the Southwest Athletic Conference, Corey Diaz of the New Star, Monroe New Star. And I'm trying to kind of get perspectives on everybody's spring game. And I know spring games are just that. They're basic, vanilla. But people want to know. So we'll try to give it to them. And Arkansas Pine Bluff, I think, had their spring game yesterday as well, Alabama and m Southern. They finished Alcorn State and Jackson State because of the weather. They won't have a spring game. 
So we'll try to get that information out to you. Also, I'm going to try to um, get you some more comments on uh, the poll question. What should and just kind of get your your interest on it. What should Coach Jackson's next contract look like? What do you want to see? And I, and I forgot to add the, the the incentives that I had as far as Coach Jackson. You know, standard win the regular season, win the swag baseball tournament, five thousand, five thousand. Uh, APR, all that good stuff. So we'll, we'll 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 get to it. We'll try to get it to it as much as we can. I've got 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. We're going to take the uh, top of the hour break. When I come back, Coach Van Petaway. Uh, hopefully he's warmed up back in Alabama. So last week we talked to him. He basically said he was freezing in Minnesota. And by the way, did you see the? NCAA basketball championship game, Virginia and Texas Tech, the two best defensive teams. I guess defense wins championship. Offense sells tickets. Guess we can say that in basketball as well. Top of the hour break. You're listening to the Carlos Brown Show on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. One voice. It can get the point across, but it only carries so far. Add a voice, it's richer, louder, but that has limits too. Add a third voice, it's even more powerful. Add another, and another, and many, many more, and we are stronger than ever. That's the power of a community coalition. They help community groups, faith groups, civic organizations, PTAs, employers, and many others in your community, organize their resources and focus them where they're needed most like fighting to keep kids away from drugs. Ask a group that you belong to if they should belong to a community coalition. It's easy to get involved. Visit helpyourcommunity.org and they'll tell you exactly how your group can help. That's helpyourcommunity.org because you get more when we get together. Brought to you by the Office of National Drug Control Policy and the Ad Council. Broadcasters come into our lives on radio and TV. Bringing us information and entertainment. Broadcasters are there for us, but who is there for them when they fall on hard times? The Broadcasters Foundation of America provides financial assistance to broadcasters in acute need due to a critical illness, accident, or other serious misfortune. If you know of a broadcaster on the air or behind the scenes who may need our help, please share our message. Visit broadcastersfoundation.org. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Get your head in the game. Come on. Are you setting the right example for your kids? You need to get some confidence. Before your child's next game, ask yourself, how would you like it if they copied your behavior? Ad revenue has declined 10, I mean, uh, 15%. Come on. You need to get some confidence. Positive Coaching Alliance has valuable tips and tools to help our kids perform their best while keeping sports enjoyable for everyone. Positive Coaching Alliance. Creating better athletes, better people. Our number two of the Carlos Brown Show, heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. Regular guest for our number two, Coach Van Petaway, former men's basketball coach at Alabama A&M. And Coach is now in the warm confines of the state of Alabama because the last time we talked to him, he was cold, and I felt cold just listening to him. Coach, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, guys. How you all doing, man? Well, I, I, I'm doing great. Um, 85 degrees. I uh, was in, in Baton Rouge yesterday, but um, some potential bad weather is on the way. So yeah, we gonna... got the same thing here in Huntsville. Yeah. Uh, it's about 70 degrees presently, but... They're expecting the weather to change uh, later on today and early in the morning. In fact, uh, they're telling the parishioners tomorrow to to be on guard and to have the the weather alert in church. Yes, indeed. The creator's still in control, even when bad things happen. You better know it. Yes, sir. Well, speaking of bad things, 
a bad thing maybe for Texas Tech, but the NCAA basketball championship game, uh, Virginia, Texas Tech in the finals, both outstanding defensive teams. Wow, Virginia takes care of business. I'm sure you enjoyed the game. Coach. Yeah, it was a great it was a great game. Uh, you know, I, I had my apprehensions. I thought it was going to be a low scoring contest. I thought defense was going to be the thing that prevailed uh, because they are two great defensive teams, but they showed that they got some offense, and they put on a show. Um, last time we talked to you, of course, it was it was last, uh, last Saturday, last, before, last, last before, Saturday. The, before the games. Yeah, mm-hmm. Auburn University. Coach, uh, have you gotten over it? Not yet, not yet, not yet. I, I'm, I'm still uh, – I, I, well, I can't blame the officials now. I, I think we made some mistakes during that game. Uh, I think with, with two fouls to give, you don't let a guy shoot a three-point shot. And and I think we missed that because the guy never should have tied the game up. But, yeah. you know, those, those are the breaks. And uh, officials are human. They they missed the the the, uh, the illegal the illegal dribble call, but uh, that didn't cost us the game. We, we made some – uh, bonehead plays down the stretch, and that's what cost them the ball game. Well, and it definitely was better. a foul. It was a foul on that last three point shot. And for the kid to walk to the free throw line and and put down three free throws, they deserve to win. That was pressure. Basically, you're saying the same thing that uh, Charles Barkley basically yeah. said. So, hey, <laughs> another reason I like Coach Pettaway, he can be objective, even yeah. if he's dealing with. With a state school. <laughs> yep, yep, <laughs> yep. But um, Virginia takes care of business. How? What's the position you think? I, I know they're disappointed, but Texas Tech and and, and what they accomplished. You you run up. Does that give you more? Let's put it this way. Does the motivation to to get better and and, and make that next step? Hopefully. The next year, is that more of the prevailing feeling or or is it more than just saying, oh, we were run up and, and getting over the disappointment? No, no, no. What they should be looking at, we were just that close. We were all time away from being national champs. Let's do what we need to do during this off season so we can get back there and show them that that was a fluke. That's what they should be thinking about and trying to do. Coach, and I wonder, now we'll, you know, in the common – some commentators I heard talked about, you know, being in Lubbock and you, you've got to love it because it's there, nothing else, kind of the way they, they, they painted the picture. Will Texas Tech coach get other offers now because of that performance? Not saying that he's hadn't done well before, but will well, he get more opportunities based he on He probably that? already has been getting offers since that game is over with because – Everybody that has an opening wants a coach that can take you to the championship game. So I'm quite sure Butch has got some offers. Uh, but now whether or not they're good enough for him to take, I, I don't know. I don't know what's out there that that would be better than the situation he's already in. <laughs> I heard Mike Prince in the background. <laughs> but yep. but in, 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 in a serious nature – I've always stated, and, and of course I'm not a coach. You are a coach. Uh, Dr. Prince played baseball on a collegiate level. My thing has always been this. You you want a staff around you that is very competent and will let the coach know if they feel that, hey, coach, we, we should try something different. Or we, we, we notice this. I, I, I don't want any yes men and women around me. Well, that's me. Uh, that's where I've always told you. If, if, if my staff don't, if they don't have an opinion, if they don't want to, if they don't want to someday be, uh, be a head coach, I don't want them around me. They got to be able to step in and say, coach, let's look at this or let's do that. This is what I think. I want input from my staff. Every coach is not like that. Some of them don't want the coaches doing anything. They don't let them work in practice. You know, some some head coaches are so dominant, they have to do everything in practice. Uh, some places I've gone into, uh, especially when I got a chance to scout with Coach Joe, you go to some of these collegiate practices, it's only one whistle in, the, in practice. That's the head wow. coach. 
I, wow. I I'm, I've never been that way. I want yeah. everybody involved. It's our team. And I yeah, it's, it's, it's our team. And everybody should be should have everybody should have a part in it. Everybody should have a part in it. Oh, somebody says they got a part too. Yep, I know. <laughs> yep. Yeah, they try to get the pop off. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I understand. Not 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 a problem. And 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 I, and I like talking with, you know, people that have coached, still coaching, former coaches. What time I ask Coach Pew? I say Coach Pew. You're so calm and quiet on the court side. Now sometimes she will raise a little hell. But she said you don't see me all the time. I do most of my uh, coaching in practice, mm-hmm. and, and, I, I, and I, I'm more animated. But when I'm on court side, I'm going to be calm and collect because it, it made my players be calm and collect. Well, I'm animated in practice. I'm animated in the game because I want <laughs> I want them jokers. I want them jokers out and 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 up and going just like me. Yeah. I want to be aggressive on the floor. That's that's our nature of, of playing. Offense and defense, let's be aggressive. So yeah. now I can't be aggressive sitting over there if I want them aggressive. So that, right. that's and just me now. That's just one coach's opinion. Right. I'm and not you're saying it's you're the best you. way. Right, right. I'm not saying it's the best way, but, but God blessed me to be this way. And uh, I, I do have a, a few wins under my belt. Oh, yeah, you got a few. You know, I said you, you, what my – one of my favorite coaches, and especially opposing coaches, because I, I saw quite a few come in the FG Clark Activity Center. And, Coach, with you, you just mentioned about practice and doing the game. What was your typical practice like as far as time, structure, and organization? It was down to the minute. Every player that I've ever coached would tell you, I walked into <laughs> practice along with my assistants, with a with an itinerary pre already planned, that entire practice session was planned before they ever hit the court. We knew from the beginning to the end what was going to take place. It was my manager's job to keep me on schedule by running that clock for each period. Wow! And if I say we was at a two hour practice, that's all we had a two hour practice. But it was two hours of constant movement, constant teaching. That's the way we did it. Excuse me, I'm getting all choked up on this, Coach. <laughs> but you yeah, know, yeah. but but that was, and I've, I've shared this before. That was the Coach Petaway I saw, courtside. Yep. I I was, I was like, wow, he is. He seems so tough, and you were tough. I seen you getting players on the courtside in their ear, and I mean into their ear. If you get my drift. But then, when the whistle blew, time for the play to start, I see Coach Petaway pat him on the back, on, on the backside. Yep, yep. You got to give him some me. love. I, I yep. could play for Coach Petaway because I know you would get me. I would submit, first of all, and do what you said. And then you, you would work me hard until the end of my life, but I would be a better player and person. Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you one of the greatest compliments I've had as a coach I have coached players who, and I stayed in the game long enough, where they had children, sons. And one of the greatest feelings in the world is when a former player said, Coach, I want my son to play for you. Mm-hmm. He needs you. That, that to me, that's saying a lot. Yep. That does say a lot. I believe even Brother Prince could have played basketball. Or with, he would accept your – your teaching, coach. Right, co- coach. I would have gave you five hard fouls every game, <laughs> and, and you know what? Fouls. I would have accepted every one of them and been smiling the whole way. Yes, sir. I'd have wow. took because I'd er- took everybody has to have a role. <laughs> I'm good for about three free throws and five good fouls, coach. Re- yes, sir. You got to have a hatchet, man. Well, got you to know, have coach. One. I, I know, coach. I know we talk collegiate basketball, but in the NBA, I always thought that the Celtics would have somebody like a Michael Prince come into the game to kind of change things up. That's what well, they did. Yeah, that that was their M.O. You got to have that. That's how you make up championship teams. Everybody knows their role. You got that hatchet man, that one person that's going to do it all. 
And that's what you got to have. That's what makes you successful. And, and speaking of success, I want to get your thoughts on this. I, 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 I'm moving to different perspectives here. I, I, I watched Magic Johnson. Great player. But he basically resigned right. from his, his position. And Larry Bird coached for, for a few. Then he left. Great players, but I just get the feeling that Magic mindset was to the point that hey, the, the game is is different. Of course, when I played, and I, I I'm not happy doing what I'm doing. But is is it more of the mindset of the players today, or am I way off base? No, 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 no. That's what it is. He he knows that the players have changed, and he didn't. He was tired of being in that environment. You know, you know Magic was, is, was successful, has been successful at everything he's ever done. You know, he's a successful businessman even before he became uh, the president of the Lakers. So he doesn't see how he can turn that thing around, and he doesn't see how he's being given the opportunity to do what he thinks is best in the interest of the program. So he's stepping, to the, he's stepping aside. He said, okay. If y'all don't want to listen to me, y'all go ahead and have it. You run with so, it. So he, in your opinion, he didn't quit. He just realized that, hey, this is not, I, I can't help them be successful. It's a different mindset now. Correct. I, that's what I really think it is. That's what I really think it is. Well, he, wasn't gonna, he wasn't going to put himself out there because the players have changed. He's tried to talk to them during the course of the season. You know, ever since he's been in that position, he he's a Laker man for life, and he wants to see the program go. But when he is not given the full authority, I feel that he needs that's 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 part of the reason why he said, you know what, y'all can have this back. Well, and, and, and sometimes that happens. He even transcends down to collegiate level. Here's something that I I've heard doing sports talk all these years, and you know when there's an opening. Let's just say there's an opening at Alabama and now. Just give me mm-hmm. a take on this. You hear a segment say you need somebody with Alabama and them tied. You need that kind of mindset. Then you had a mindset saying, no, we need to get the best person that's that available. We can possibly get that's a- available. I-, I don't think both scenarios interact with each other. It's who's doing the hiring, what they believe is the best situation for this time right and i i, I think i think the the coach that's go, that's going in there he got to be on the same page as that ad and that president if the three of them are not together it's not gonna work it's not gonna work and it doesn't always mean that you got to have a company man you can go outside the company sometime mm-hmm. it depends on the situation now if, if they've been going outside the company uh Two or three times and it doesn't work. Yeah, now I might need to get somebody from the company, somebody that knows the inner workings of the situation. So it yeah. it just depends. But I do know I don't care what situation you're in. If that president, that athletic director, and that head coach not on the same page, it's not gonna it's not gonna work. I understand. I I agree. And you know you've got a you know a couple of openings. Um, you may have some openings in basketball in the upcoming uh, after the upcoming season, but you know you want the conference to be better. You want each institution, no matter what sport, to just get better because it's better for a whole the whole yep. conference if everybody is doing uh, better. I, I know last week kind of asked you about the upcoming year. A quick scenario, in your opinion, on the conference basketball as as a whole. Who does Coach Pettaway see as the, 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 the front runners? Who you see improving or who you think will improve the most in, in the conference in basketball next, for next year? I, well, I think Gremlin has a chance to be a good, good team. I think Prairie View may have enough coming back, and if they got do well on the recruiting trail, I think they can still be at the top. And with the pattern that Texas Southern has has made out there in Houston, you can never count them out. 
So it, the basketball as a whole is great in the swag. I thought we had a great year. I thought the teams that uh, they showed their class by uh, winning great games in the preseason, then in the postseason. So I think SWAC basketball is on the rise. And I think we're going to be okay. We just need I, – I just think the, the fans and the administrations at some of these schools that are not successful, they need to, need to be more patient. Be mm-hmm. patient and give their people an opportunity to do their job. Well, in that scenario, that answers my question, the, the alarm and the fan part. <laughs> right. <laughs> For me, I'm going to be patient, even though some of my brethren – are already feeling the wrath, and they want to say if it's not a better year next year, give him the door. I'm going to be patient and let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, yeah, you got to be patient. You got to be patient. Now, Dr. Prince, his uh, his school, well, I always say it, it, it's easier to be patient when you have a little more coins. Mm-hmm. So that, that kind of makes it a little easier. But he's passionate. He wants to see Prairie View do well in all sports. Well, they're going to do uh, well. They're doing well. Yes. I don't I don't know how I end up in this. You see how he drags me in this every week, Coach? <laughs> and and I, I, he be picking on me, Coach. And I'm not, I hadn't said anything other than I would give you five hard fouls and three points. That's all I said. But mm-hmm. to the to the record, if it's tiddlywinks, I want to win. There you go. Yeah, I knew that. It, and, and, there and, you go. And that's what I was getting out of. <laughs> I know how to get it out of. Yeah, we we, we can be shooting models. I still yes, want to win. Yes, sir. And and I I want I want to be competitive in everything I touch. There you go. Everything if, I touch. If, if, you, if you're not going to be competitive, why, why even bother with it? Absolutely. I'll, I'll never forget. And I'm going to shut this. I'm going to shut my mic. I'm going to drop the mic. Uh, uh, that someone was asking me, was they said, Prince, man, you do a pretty good job. You wait on that opportunity to go to ESPN. I said, no, I'm not. I said, I am my ESPN for my swag schools. I said, they, I said, I'm doing what I love and will love doing it until the Lord calls me home. And there I don't go. need anyone else to validate what I do. I compete within myself. And I go out to make sure that this show is produced better, that this network is produced better each and every day. And, and that's you, and you all do a great you do a great job. You do a great job. Well, thank you very much, sir. And on that, yeah. my brother, I'ma drop the mic. <laughs> brother Prince, you know I know how when you when you're too quiet. I know how to get that fire coming back up. It's not out. It's there. Yeah, yep. you old rascal. It's there. <laughs> On that note, Coach Petaway, it has been a pleasure talking with you on SWAC basketball um, this this year and from time to time. Get your back. Thank you. Thank you. And okay. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed being out here with you guys and I look forward to the swag of doing bigger and better things. Yeah, and before you know it, it'll be round ball time again. Yep. And then, as they say, let the games begin. Have a yeah, great let's, week. Let's do this again. Yep. Yes, Coach, sir. you Have go a- be in Paw Paw, man. Take care of them grandkids. Okay, thank you, man. Yep, they, they got me going this morning. <laughs> and tell, tell them I appreciate them, too. Okay, man. All right. All right, fellas. You all hang in there, man. All right, we'll okay. do. That was Coach Van Penaway wrapping up the basketball season. Got his perspective and tape on several basketball related topics. Now, with that being said, we're going to transition back to some baseball talk. Charles Edmond from the Alcorn State Radio Network will join me next. We're going to take a a look, a little bit inside look at Southwestern Athletic Conference, the standings, the schedule for today, and uh, get his thoughts on uh, what has happened so far in the Southwestern Athletic Conference uh, as far as baseball-wise. Now, 
when you look at that Western Division, what I'm going to kind of let you know is there's one team that has surprised everybody. We know who that is. But one team that was left for dead, now quietly but surely, they've moved up a little bit. But guess what? I think PB alum still will look for something to happen at the uh, end of the baseball season. But maybe, just maybe, that, what, 34-2 to loss? Conference-wise, maybe that shook them up a little bit. Midweek games, still important. In the conference, the baseball teams have to do a better job competing and winning some of those midweek games. That Could that be the goal for the rest of the season and for next year? I think it can get done. We shall see. We will talk more after this timeout. You're listening to the Carlos Brown Show on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. Hello, this is Lonzo Hardy, Vice President of the SWAC Alumni Association. The SWAC Alumni Association is an organization founded in 1999 with the goal of enhancing the great legacy of excellence in the SWAC as well as preserving the athletic heritage of the SWAC. Its membership is open to former athletes as well as current and former coaches, assistant coaches, athletic administrators, referees, employees of conference member institutions, as well as fans of SWAC sports. Individuals interested in gaining membership can contact the organization's president, Roscoe Nance, at 509 Worcester Street in Herndon, Virginia, 20170. Annually, the SWAC Alumni Association holds an, a Legends Award in which Lifetime Achievement Awards are presented. Occasionally, a, leg, a legend of the conference is honored in a roast, and annually, one or two former student athletes are presented Degree Completion Scholarship Awards. Contact the organization's president, Roscoe Nance, at 509 Worcester Street in Herndon, Virginia. The birth of legends are storied in this conference. We must never forget our rich history. We now turn our gaze to the future. The new legends will emerge. New heroes to arise. The Southwestern Athletic Conference. Be our history. Drivers and bicyclists both have the right to be on the road and travel safely. And when we're on the road together, safety is a shared responsibility. State law requires drivers to maintain at least three feet of clearance when passing bicyclists. And bicyclists should always ride with the direction of traffic and follow all traffic signals. It's safer. It's courteous. It's the law. A message from the Regional Planning Commission Pedestrian and Bicycle Program. Be the one with courage to fight child abuse. All Texans must find the courage to fight child abuse. Learn the signs and symptoms and report suspected abuse to appropriate authorities. Learn and know these warning signs. A child who undergoes changes in behavior, appetite, or routine. Watch for unexplained injuries a change in academic performance, or loss of interest by a child in regular activities. Trust your instincts. If you suspect something, do something. If you believe a child is in an abusive situation, please call the Texas Abuse Hotline at 1-800-252-5400. Be the one with courage. To find your local children's advocacy center, visit onewithcourage.org. On behalf of children, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Welcome back to this week's edition of the Carlos Brown Show. Heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. Let me read this quickly because it was kind of a topic of conversation earlier. The poll question is, what should Coach Garrett Jackson next contract look like? DA says, and this, this is somebody's buddy, he says three year, two hundred thousand. I almost dog piled on the sofa again. Incentives for winning the regular season championship and a separate incentive for winning the SWAC tournament. Three years has been the number that everybody's talking about. Two hundred thousand bucks. Unbelievable. Hey, before you get in there, could I just say, Desmond Allen, I love you, brother. And the uh, the Open Mic Broadcast Network is the best thing your ears have heard on earth. <laughs> $200,000 will we'll all be, be contributing money to the department. My goodness. But I see where, where uh, Desmond's heart is. I can appreciate it. That two hundred thousand, wow! Knock off about seventy five thousand off of that. But we'll see what Coach Banks has to say about that next week. I already got a running uh, bet that he's going to say something about the budget, and he may not can get in specifics, which I understand. But as much as he can tell us, as much as he can tell us about taking care of Coach Jackson. We're going to talk baseball now with our guest, Charles Edman of the uh, All Court State Radio Network. Charles, sorry you had to hear that part, but I had to to read that one. That has kind of been in the conversation. Southern, pick the finish fifth in the West. Not going to happen. Alabama State and Texas Southern pick to win it all. But, you know, a funny thing can happen during the regular season. Prognosticators can be wrong. So, with that being said, Charles, your, your thoughts on this baseball season now entering the second half of the SWAC conference season? Well, good morning to you, Carlos. Glad to, glad to be on uh, once again. And it, just to bring up a point here, I kind of agree with, with the poll question. I did see it. Um, I, I agree with with the years, and I do agree with the money. I do agree with a three-year deal, 200000 That's about sixty-five, sixty-six a year. You can throw incentives in there for winning the division. Uh, you win the tournament and all that. Uh, I think I think that's about right. I, I'm kind of in agreement with that one. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Maybe I misunderstood something. Let's see. That's 200000 for three years or uh, uh, a year? Oh, no, 200000 a year, no. No, absolutely not. No. Uh, I think if you look at the baseball coaches around the league um, in terms of what they're making, um, I, I think you know some are making six figures. I think Coach Cador was at one point in time, the former coach at Southern, um, and that may be about it. Uh, but I, I think that's about, that's about correct. I would, I would say that. I mean, considering where Southern's baseball program is now, uh, I'm gonna do the quick math. Three years for two hundred thousand. Maybe I looked at it. I looked at the um, comment the wrong way. Yeah, that's and about uh, sixty-seven thousand plus sixty-five, sixty-six thousand a year. I would, I would go along with that. I think that would be fine. Um, you know, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, sixty-five. Wait, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait a minute, three. <laughs> I, I wonder if he's saying three years, two hundred thousand. Uh, Desmond, give us a clarification on that. Yeah, it, 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 I'm almost willing to bet it's not too hard. You have some football coaches that are making 200000 a year. So I, I, my guess is. Can't, he can't he can't expect that man to go in there for $66,000 a year. Well, I, I would I would say that if you throw incentives in there. He's making that now. He's making more than that. Well, I, I don't know how much he's making. I mean, uh, I mean, I. I don't know how much he's making at the time. I mean, my my guess is maybe less. I don't know. I mean, because where the program 75, was. Seventy-five thousand. How much? Seventy-five. Okay. Okay. Well. See, originally I said it, 
bounce him up to a hundred thousand plus incentives. Well, I mean that's hey, that's he would be the highest paid coach in the conference by far if that happened. No, Wait a minute, no, Co- no, Coach Robinson. Coach Robinson Co- is at about a, one. A, a one about I would say one of the highest then. I, mean, I, I don't know how much the coaches are making. I don't know how much uh, Coach Rob is making. Is he making six figures? Yes, he is. He's making six figures. Okay, yes, he so he'll is. be the second. Maybe Omar Johnson third. Um, yes. And maybe Bama State's coach, Coach yeah, Vasquez. That's what I said. Va- those, those, those three right there have been, and when you look at the most consistent programs. And based on what they've done. Yeah, the most consistent programs have been Texas Southern, Alabama State, Jackson State. Not necessarily in that order, but those three baseball programs have been on fire. Um, yeah. uh, uh, Pine Bluff, uh, James might be at the 75, 85 brink. I know uh, Prairie View's at the, the 65 brink. Um, you have, um, I don't know where Alcorn is. Valley is at about the 55, 65 brink. And you, you, but you're looking at these teams that are in that that six figure salary for the most part, those guys are fully funded too, as far as scholarships goes. Mm-hmm. So, and, and Cato, Cato is making one, 125,000. Right. And 25,000 from the foundation. Coach Jackson is making 75,000. So he was cut in half. They basically cut their salary in half to make an upswing. So in retrospect, if you allow me to look at it from just a flat, simple business perspective, uh, 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 Southern University is getting away with grand theft. At seventy five thousand, yes, a year. That's yes, what you're saying? that's grand theft. Well, okay. when, well, you kind of understand. You, you kind of understand that because if I'm not mistaken, Carlos, and you can help me here with the way Coach Jackson came on board, he kind of bet on himself. If, if, if I'm not mistaken, yes, he, sir. Out, he, he took mm-hmm. a two year deal. Was it a two year deal? It was a two year deal. Yeah. He, he, yeah, was yeah. Told, he was told, and you can verify this with your guests next week, but he was told that they offered two year deals, take it or leave it. He decided he would take it for the opportunity to showcase his managerial skills, and he's taken the, uh, the, the situation and run up and down the road with it. And, and and see that's why I don't listen to some of you guys who who talk about a four year contract up top and, and and somebody said I didn't say it was right most people say it was wrong but what did someone say that's the way Southern does business and then you get it on the back end if you prove yourself so if he's proving himself you are coming in for peanuts at seventy five. Okay, and part of that, part of that, at seventy five is part kind of what you pay an inexperienced uh, head coach, even though he had Power Five tides, SEC tides. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he'd say, "I'll take all that and gamble on myself," and as a result, he's come at. So they're gonna have to pay the man. Well, well, clearly, I mean, I agree. They're gonna have to pay. Him. If I'm Roman Banks, I mean, considering what Southern did the other night beating LSU, and if Southern makes a deep run in the tournament, if they get to the finals, I, I mean, of course, if they win it, you're going to have to pony up. I mean, there's there's no question about it. He's your guy. Instead of the two year deal, you either going to bolster his salary at two years or give him a three year deal and how level about, it off. How about both? Mm. So, what realistically do you guys think is a Fair and above fair contract in years, incentives, and in pay. I'm just interested. I think three years at two fifty for I, three years. And That's I want about to, eighty I'm, and change, and you load it up with incentives. Mm, I go- think APR and all that. I think you will be a nice package, in in my opinion. I'm going to say 330 at three years with incentives. Well, he's on the high end. That's 110 can, can, a year. Can, can, can for my for my purposes, can you say what what a year? We talking about Coach Jackson, not um, the pitching coach, recruitment, and all that. 
in in ye- annual yearly. An annual uh, yearly a hun- uh, 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 hundred ten base, with I would throw in about between fifteen and twenty thousand incentives. Well, here's here's the other thing, and I mm. think you know this is Carlos. You, you you've been on this kick, you know, for football. If you're going to pay that type of money for him, for the head coach, which I don't have an issue with, you're going to have to some money's going to have to come out of a pool somewhere for your assistants. And I think most of us, let's just be honest, we only have one assistant in baseball. We we've, we've done that forever and a day. I think that you have to pony up a little bit to maybe get a second assistant. So you're going to pay the head coach a bunch of money, but then skimp all the assistants. I think you know we've done that throughout this in this conference for a long time, and I think now the time needs to come if they can afford it. If the head coach needs additional money for an assist another assistant, I think that has to happen as well if you're going to play at that high level. Well, and that's not an if, uh, brother Charles. I think that is an absolute must. And here's why I say that. And I've been this has been my battle cry for many many years. Um, we have a pipe dream of being competitive and, and playing the power five schools in football and basketball, but your greatest impact is going to be on a baseball diamond. And the, the, the playing field is equal when it comes to scholarships. And so I got a greater opportunity of being consistently pulling off these midweek victories as we did with LSU, as was done with New Orleans, as was done from time to time with Pine Bluff and and Texas Southern beating some of these unexpected wins in the Big 12 and so forth. So why not invest back into that thing that could really put my program, my conference, my institution on the map? I, I agree with that, and I think it's just. But then, you know, you have to go back to the willing and able. I mean, I, I think if you talk to Roman Banks, and you will next week, and the, the Chancellor and the President, I think they're willing to do that. But the question is, are they able to do that? And I think that's a whole other, you know, conversation for another time. I mean, we all would. I'm sure every AD and every President would like to pay their coaches more money. They, you know, they would love to be able to be able to do it. I mean, willing to do it. Are they able to do it is the question. And, well, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of look sideways when you... Yeah, I mean, I mean... I, I, when you I, say that about some of our... Pre- I, I'm, I, I know people say you, you can't accuse Coles Brown of being a good company man because <laughs> I kind of been like the street committee. I'm on the fan side. Yeah. But with that being said, fi- finish your point. I, I got an interesting um, text message. I'm a listener. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's just, I, I do think, I mean, if you just have an honest conversation with the presidents of all of our schools and just to be honest and realistic about it and have them talk about it, and we're not talking about coaches because the, the same pool of money is paying for athletics as paying for academics as well. Let's be honest about that. If they, if, if they were to be honest with you, they would say they would love to pay their faculty, staff, and coaches, ADs. But the reality is they're willing to do it, but are they able to do it? No, they're not. And so when you look at athletics, I'm sure Roman Banks would love to pay his baseball coach more. I mean, a two-year deal based on where the program was. I kind of thought three because it does take, I would think, three years. But that didn't happen. Maybe Southern couldn't afford to invest three years' worth of salary into that position, right, at that time that it was offered. But now I think if Southern continues on the upward trend, I think clearly you got your baseball coach, young guy, and now you got to now you got to invest in it, and we'll see going forward if if that happens. If not, then you know some other stuff could happen. You might lose that guy, or you might bet on himself again. We'll, we'll see on that one. Yeah, if if you if you lose a a coach that's been good for your program to a better program, bigger program like Los Angeles, you can understand that. Guy has a family, and he wants to see how well he can move up in the profession. But if you can keep him, and he honestly wants to be there, and you can show him that you're committed and progress with incentives and and always trying to get him as much money that you can and be honest about it, I don't think you would have a problem. But losing 
to the first way I mentioned, that's okay. Um, the listener says this. The other issue you all are not bringing up is the fact that there may be others interested in his service. And I'm not surprised about that statement, which will create a bidding war. That's one reason against two-year deals. Three. Here's the reason what I what I told text to some of my colleagues. Three-year deal and a hundred thousand. But then I'm thinking about it. Okay, 110 incentives, five thousand for uh, winning the regular season. You know. Five thousand for winning the SWAC tournament, APR issues, keeping it above average, another five, and then uh, that's when I, I fell asleep, basically. <laughs> um, but but you get my drift. Uh, that's what I say. You take care of with um, Coach Jackson. He has, according to my source, thank you, two full time assistant coaches. APR issues when he first got there. He'll have the full allotment of scholarships. And then something that um, Dr. Prince brought up about the midweek games. Much success, you know, a, a, a better success with that going forward. That's for everybody. Could I, in, could, in I, the could I please, I want to interject this, brother, and I, and I really appreciate you all allowing me to share. Because if there's one thing that I'm pa- I'm passionate about all of our sports, but I'm passionate about baseball because mm-hmm. it, it's a personal experience that I have gained throughout the years. And one of the things that's been chafing me for years, chafing me for years, and this is no disrespect toward anyone, but we have people over baseball operations that don't understand baseball. That's part of the problem. Mm-hmm. That's part of the problem. You you have I don't care what market that you're in. You have signage available on your outfield walls that can help offset some of your baseball operational expenses. If you get your people off their backsides off of marketing, who's supposed to be marketing, you're paying people handsome salaries and they can't go out and you tell me sell signage to help raise twenty five, thirty thousand dollars that can go towards your baseball operational budgets. You can't do that. Something's wrong, man. We're talking about a division one, the, the timing of our games. We play these games at times that people can't even come out and enjoy a good baseball game. Who that has a steady working job can afford to take off on a Friday or a Tuesday at, at two o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon to go watch a baseball game when you can make more because most of our schools are in rural settings. If you have a Tuesday game at six o'clock with the night lights coming on and you got people that are saying, hey, there's a game going on. You charge three or five bucks. The local high schools are charging five and seven dollars to get into a baseball game. Surely we can get on the same page and raise the necessary funding instead of people sitting up and just building it like a field of dreams and all they're concerned about is football and basketball revenue and they look at like a cow with a new gate post when it comes to the other sports there is there is money out there but the people are not just going to give it to you you got to make it enticing to they want to deliver it to you I think it and I would say tell us how you really feel but (laughs) <laughs> we, we, see, we see how you really feel but next week I think that's something that we can relay to Dr. McClellan yeah and and kind of get his thoughts on um, you know the whole baseball situation because I know over the years we've always said that this is the one, this is a sport out of the quote unquote big three that can really give us some um, some good things ahead for us sports wise. But if I'm hearing you right, you've got to nurture it. You got to in, uh, invest uh, and in some cases reinvest in the program or invest to make sure that you can put yourself on the right path to have these dreams come true as far as when, swag baseball. When you look at it, when you look at it of all the sports that we compete at on a division one level, Baseball, on paper, 
is the balance sport. You don't have the difference between FBS and FCS, 85 scholarships versus 63. You understand? It is mm-hmm. 11.7 scholarships. 11.7 scholarships, and I might not be able to get the biggest and the fastest uh, guys to come be on my program, but I can doggone put together some athletic, baseball-minded, baseball high IQ individuals that can come and put together a program. And I'm going to say another thing, too. The day of having an entire African-American baseball program representing our HBCUs are done. And you've got to find the best player that's going to fit your system, that's going to fit the academia requirement, and go out there and put together a competitive program. Well, you kind of, I, I kind of have seen that over the years. You know, add a little bit here, a little bit there. And if you look at, I haven't seen every team, but I, I usually see the teams on, in, in the Western Division and few in the East. They're not all African American. Hadn't been that way in a while. No sir. Yep. No sir. Yeah. But now on that note, because it's eleven fifty one. The Western Division, Southern University, twelve and two. This is the up to date conference standings by a website of my choosing. Grambling State University, ten and seven. Prairie View eight and eight, Texas Southern seven and eight, Arkansas Pine Bluff two and fourteen. I could ask both of you guys which is the most disappointing team in the conference, and we'll, we we'd have a nice choice of two. <laughs> but I know Pine Bluff is going to come up. Yeah, for me, Carlos. I mean, obviously, I didn't. I never thought UAPB would be at the level where they're at. I mean, it's one thing to be down, but they're they're down at the pits. And I don't know what's going on with Coach James this year. I don't know if it's a rebuilding year. Um, but it's you know it's it's a shock that they're just, they're not in the conversation. They're probably not gonna make the tournament. Um, I would say Texas Southern too, because they were used to we're just so used to that team being at the top of the heap. And this year just may be a rebuilding year for, for Mike Robb. It does happen where you lose a lot more and don't get a lot back once those guys leave. Well, but we, I, I'm sorry. I, I was going to go ahead and finish, and I'll finish on Texas Southern. Yeah, I mean, so, I, mean I, don't, I haven't followed TSU, but it's just, it is kind of strange to see that they're where they are at uh, 7 and 8. And to see, if you look at Prairie View, and Dr. Prince knows more about Prairie View than just about anyone, I mean, for a team that, you know, was giving up 23 and 24 runs early on, to see that mathematically they still have a chance to maybe be a two-seed in the West, that's kind of interesting there. But, you know, so I would say UAPB, the big disappointment more than anybody else, Mm-hmm. Um, from, uh, by far. I mean, I never would think Carlos James and that new facility they have and the backing he has and the upgrades that, that's going on over there for that program. And this just may be just a tough year. Injuries, there's a lot of reasons why teams are not winning. Talent, injuries, bad luck. I mean, just all those things could be in the bag as to why UAPB is not winning this year. Four scholarships. Not good. Four scholarships in regards to Texas Southern. And, and this is why I have to really tip my hat to Mike Robertson and coach Barker for their baseball and softball programs. And I think people really underestimate uh, these guys don't even own a baseball or softball facility. They don't, they, they don't even practice at the same place for softball that they play their games. Not the case for baseball. But they're playing in city public parks. Think about that for a second. City public parks. And for whatever the reason, whatever the dynamics are, they are competitive each year. Softball has won nine consecutive championships, uh, Western titles. Nine of them. 
It's hard to do that twice in a row, but to do it nine times in a row. But but it's because we are not investing in the sport that could really neutralize all of it, could give all of us feel good moments throughout the entire season and the rest of the year because we devalue it. Our African-American kids are not even picking up a baseball like they used two years ago. Because Have you even seen in the Major League Baseball 8% now? Yes. I mean, African-Americans? But it and, was, and I include the Dominican and, and Haiti and they're, they're of African descent. Go ahead. Yeah, but, but I'm saying all that to say this. We've got the sport on our books. Let's capitalize off of it. Mm-hmm. Let's maximize off of it. You're talking about student growth. You're talking about prestige and money coming in. Go out there and consistently beat on these Power Five programs and, and beat on these Southland programs which are, and because they're making a fast move right now, brother. They're lobbying right now. It's because of the Big 12, because of the Big 10 that they're uh, not having a third assistant yet and gradually moving up to 22 scholarships. Why? So they can shut the door on the whole thing. Well, you mentioned that earlier, and I don't think that – that's an important point to remember for the next two weeks. People who are, who have influence, let's see what their thoughts on what you just brought up and what would be their answer to this and see what can be done. And I'm going to be a little facetious here. Gregor Park, Texas Southern, I'm not feeling sorry for him. He wins. <laughs> and and I'm going to say this take the Southern Steel on a five game losing streak but beware when yep. tournament time comes yep. that's and all I I'm going to say and I think that's the scary part that's he the will be heard of and I think there you know, Mike Robb knows how to make adjustments in the tournament and that's that's the scary part they're, when they're good in the regular season they're even more dangerous in the tournament but when they're not as good in the regular season, they could be just as just as impressive because no one's paying attention to them. And I think this year, I think all eyes have been on Southern, and rightfully so. I mean, because no one expected the Jaguars to be twelve and two through fourteen games, considering where they were picked to, to to finish. So I think you know with that, and I think it's good for for SWAC baseball that Southern is back on top. I mean, I think, let's let's just be honest. It's good for it's good for baseball business in the conference. Southern playing well because the fan base is so passionate. You know the Jaguar Nation. You know, come tournament time in New Orleans, an hour from their campus, if they make a deep run, you know that's going to be good for business at the MLB Urban Invitational. They'll they'll pack the place, and so I think it's good for Southern. Obviously, it's good for the SWAC to see that Southern is doing well. But you can't count out Grambling. Grambling has looked really bad at times. But then you look up, they're 10 and 7. They're only two behind Southern in the win column. Um, they're three and a half games back with uh, seven to play. So mathematically, Grambling can still catch them, but I think Southern has the big momentum right now. And in the Eastern Division, Alabama State 11 and 3 on a uh, one game winning streak. Jackson State on an eight game winning streak, 7 and 6. Alabama A&M, 8-7, and seven. Mississippi Valley State, 5-9, and nine. Alcorn State, 4-10. and ten. Today's schedule, Texas Southern at Lipscomb, Jackson State, and Alabama A&M, Alcorn State at Alabama State, of course, and in Alcorn State and Alabama State. Yesterday's schedule, Southern 10-4 to four over Pine Bluff in game 1, 21-2 in game 2. Lipscomb, seventeen. Or Lipscomb, Lipscomb, seventeen to two over Texas Southern. Prairie View loses to Grambling, seven to four, but they won one of the two, ten to seven over Grambling, and Jackson State, eleven to six over Alabama A and M. Less than a minute left here in today's show. Uh, appreciate uh, you, Charles, uh, as usual. We'll talk with you. Hopefully next week. All right, Carlos and Dr. Prince, appreciate it. Good, good conversation. Thank you, man. Keep the conversation going, everyone. Um, thank Dr. Prince, also Jim Klein, Peter, I'm and sorry. also Coach I'm sorry, Dan Carlos. Petaway. 
I apologize, brother, but this is my game. I love it. Oh, I understand. Next week, Coach Banks, Roman Banks, Director of Athletics at Southern University, scheduled to join me. Also, the Commissioner of the Southwest Athletic Conference, Dr. Charles McClellan. We'll continue that baseball conversation and give those thoughts and opinions to Dr. McClellan and also Coach Banks. Get their thoughts on it. Excuse me, I'm getting choked up as usual. Everyone, make sure you tune in next Saturday at 10 a.m. for another edition of the Carlos Brown Show. Have a great weekend. Peace and God bless.